Yeah, hello guys, girls. Hi. <laughs> um, so XJazz, of course, can't happen this year physically. We did an online festival on the 29th and 30th of April, but we are going to keep mm -hmm. posting and doing some content, and this is one of them, a lab talk. I have two colleagues with me, and I wanted to talk with people who are in the business, but not on the front stages or like the founders or CEOs of festivals or companies, but we are rather in the backstages bringing the festival to you. And yeah, I wanted to talk with them, how, the, how they're dealing with the situation, how are they feeling and how, how's going everything basically. So I would like you both maybe just like a short introduction uh, to make like from yourselves to make everybody know like, who are you? What are you doing? Like just a couple of sentences. Shebna, maybe you can start. Okay, um, this is Shebna. I uh, mostly work uh, in uh, production operations and um, management in music business. Uh, I've done various festivals and one of concerts for the past five, five years, mostly in Turkey. Now I'm based in Istanbul, but I soon to be based in Dusseldorf, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's very shortly me. <laughs> and me, uh, my name is Vanya. Um, I live in Berlin and I'm a freelancer um, sound engineer and working um, for both live and um, studio recordings but um, the major part of my of my work is on the live side and um, which yeah which means a quite special situation for me right now in this corona crisis mm -hmm. I need to yeah. give a frame. Um, I'm from the XJazz team. I've been working, I think it's been over two years now. And um, I've been doing different kind of things like venue management and like other stuff helping during the festival. But mainly my job has been uh, coordinating and helping with the lab stuff. And besides that, I, I mean, I'm living in Germany, in Berlin right now, but I come from Istanbul as well. And I've worked in festivals with Shebnam and I worked with Vanya at X Jazz. He was a big help and he did an amazing job mm -hmm. with our online festival. You should check it out if you didn't, like the Edward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> point right now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, let's move on. So how are you guys feeling? Maybe Vanya, you can start. How are you dealing with the whole situation? How's it going? Well, it, it changes. Um, from catastrophe to, um, wow, it's great to have that much time, especially together with my family. I have two kids and um, I never had so much time um, to spend with them, which is, which is awesome on the one hand. And on the other hand, also sometimes pretty exhausting because there's no, no kindergarten, no nothing that, that uh, supports us in our everyday life. And of course, even if there, there's less jobs, um, there's always something, something to do where, where you can um, really take care of your children uh, as, um, at, at the side of this. And um, yeah, so basically, um, it's, it's always, always some there, there's always some struggle um like getting um getting your things on track and i'm on the lucky side that that i i work in two kind of branches um in the in the sound world um i also work on the on the recording side and recording studios and um i'm a mixer as well and and stuff so um there is one side of all my jobs is still kind of covered and oh, um, cool. because some little things still take place um, there's also also in studios and on the recording side there's there, um, a lot of projects are cancelled or at least postponed um, because people are are uncertain um, how to how to act if if it's if it's still appropriate to to meet each other also in small groups um, but 
there, there are still um, those guys who say, well, um, let, let's meet in small groups in, in studio and let's work um, on our things. But, and on the other hand, um, there is this big part and also um, for me, actually the main or major part um, of, of life working on, on um, live concerts and um, and this is quite well we we don't have any idea of when this is gonna be start again yeah and um and this is like like well um also my colleagues um people people are, uh, start to be afraid mm. really and um especially those people who who really get who um only work on this um on, on on live events and um yeah because we can be we can be sure about the fact that um this is one of the last things that is going to be reopened again mm. and um because now people start to discuss um first well uh, losing losing up uh some some of the restrictions um but all those kinds of events like um yeah like concerts of course and also like um like uh, music clubs and and stuff um it's it's not only the fact that um that there are many people um really close to each other and um that is that there is an um uh, the, the danger of um of being affected by the virus but um on, on the other hand, um, I'm, I'm sometimes not sure how important people consider all this thing, all mm -hmm. these things, mm -hmm. yeah. at least in politics and stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I've heard like a couple of creative solutions. I think a club in Sweden, it should be, they opened, but like under the um, social distancing rules, like everybody has a special spot where they can stay. And I think it's like a club of, I don't know, like thousand or, or 2000 capacity. And they just can have like 50 or 60 people, including yeah. the personnel. And you have to stay on your located place and you can go to the bar, but the personnel is coming and taking orders. And they're like doing this minimal concerts kind of. And there's also an interesting solution like the do you know the car cinemas there? The, I think it was in the US, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if there was also in Germany. Like people are going with cars to a place and yeah. they're to stay yeah. and yeah. people it's are visible. playing it coming yeah. through the radio, kind of. I read about yeah. this. Yeah, I read about this from, from yeah. Denmark, I think, or, or some Scandinavian country. Yeah, well. I mean, that's interesting, but Germany did say it's going to take at least till 21st of August, I think. In Turkey, I don't think there's been any kind of nations. No, nothing, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think this is gonna be the end. Um, first thing, and the second thing is, um, well, all, um, all, all events and all promoters and um, et cetera have to, have to rebuild all their all their stuff. The, the, um, it's not said that that there's going to be um, amount of bookings. Of course, that that people um, that people buy the tickets again, like they did before. And um, so, also also on this side, people are pretty uncertain about um, how how to continue and how to prepare the restart. Um, that's also important. It, it, it needs to be prepared. You cannot, you cannot um, start like from one day to the other. And um, but but if you if if there's no um, if there's no safety, yeah, you you don't know how to when to start and how. So yeah. Yeah. Shana, what about you? How are you feeling? What's going on? Uh, it, it it differs, but I'm on the unlucky side. Like um, I only do live events, so all my work for the following month got cancelled. Um, like, but I'm used to getting my works or events getting cancelled here in Turkey due to force major happening all the time. 
but now like this is something um no one can say precisely when will we return to or like normal public life that we know of so the uncertainty is really worries me because like i don't know when like everyone like when things will go back to normal the are normal and um yeah and the, also the summer uh, season is gone that also sucks for me um like most of the freelancers because i try to balance what i earn during summer months to the other winter months that i don't earn much um so so a year for me is gone already and uh, but other than that um the first weeks were really um crazy for me because i was trying to move to germany and all the flights got cancelled and i had a limited time of visa given me that i was supposed to move in and that was running out and so that was really um scary for me the first week of this um quarantine times but now it's all sorted out and i'm registered in germany officially so i'm feeling much more relaxed than i am before and yeah i'm just now taking time to myself reading all the books i never <laughs> read before doing almost no jobs because i can't do anything trying to learn German uh, and yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it goes for me. I mean, to give you context, one other thing about Turkey, um, we've had so many events and festivals canceled because there was a bombing, because somebody died, because something happened, because there were protests. Mm -hmm. So like the Turkish music business scene or the festival scene is kind of always prepared for getting cancelled yeah. we're getting cancelled but not in the sense of okay we don't know anymore when it's going to come back because usually yeah. you know after a bombing or whatever okay in a couple of months we can do it again so this is kind of an interesting situation for turkey as well yeah but i see unfortunately we were um we were used to this kind of cancellation policy but yeah um, I'm also really interested in how you felt or what you thought when you first heard like in March, because we're now in May, but when you heard in March, mm -hmm. okay, there's something, there's a crisis coming, something's happening before the, all the lockdowns and started, like, did you expect it to become this big? Because right now I think we're, we kind of got used to it being this way because it's not like the first cancellations or whatever, but like, what was your first reaction? Well, I... I was kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> um, I, I didn't. I didn't think it will get this big. Um, even if I was affected um, quite early by um, a tour that actually would have uh, would have taken place in Italy, and um, well, I, I was I was about about to go to Italy for for one week with an artist, and um, this was cancelled one week before in um, late February, oh. and um, so this was the first moment where I got that um, this can become serious, and um, but also at this point I, I didn't think that that it will affect us in in this yeah immersive way i i was on tour with uh with another band it's it's called mocha fd orchestra um it's a it's an orchestra that plays tunes from the 1920s um which is quite ironic <laughs> in this situation and um and there um yeah people well um in at, at this point um all the newspapers were were writing about it and um it well, everybody talked about it, and um, and from day to day, we always um, actually were expecting um, that the next show is going to be cancelled mm -hmm. within the next mm -hmm. ten minutes or so. And um, but we still were allowed to um, to play four shows, and um, yeah, and this this was quite. A, a quite strange situation because we were 20 people on a bus on, on a nightliner and so pretty packed <laughs> and um and people everybody started to talk about hygienic and um uh, and everything that that's related with um 
with our health mm-hmm. and um and and of course also getting ill and um yeah and and th- yeah and then well we we kind of crashed into into um into these cancellations we we were like really on top of um of this um of this tour and um and had a great time there and um of course sometimes sometimes thought about okay this can be over um the next day and on the other hand we we were like okay maybe maybe we get around get around it and um yeah and and so um it was of course some something that was pretty expected but on the other hand um as we were um on tour as we played every evening it it still was kind of shocking mm. that that now it is reality that um all the venues are closed and even more we um we came back um the day that in germany it was decided um that all schools and kindergartens and and actually all public um was was shut down and um th- this was quite um uh, strange it was really strange yeah. feeling yeah 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 i think it hit me in the beginning of march like uh at that time i was uh, managing a sponsorship relations uh, for a street culture mes- festival that was going to happen in mid april of course it got cancelled as well um so and i was working with and in contact with a lot of big global brands um and they were getting uh emails uh, about this situation that um made them cancel all their own events so they were also informing us on those situations and saying that this festival probably won't happen because we're getting this email from the global that won't let us be in this event like sort of event and um at that time that that was the time when we um planned to reschedule and we knew that of okay like this won't happen in mid april anymore at that time we knew and so and now we can't even reschedule because we still don't know um when will it end and uh, how will it be so yeah so before then that i was like i wasn't giving any attention to it before it hit me personally like i didn't know about it much and yeah but now we all used to it um yeah, yeah. and it feels like lo- now it's been like this forever or something although it's just been mm-hmm. a one month and a half but yeah mm-hmm. yeah go ahead <laughs> um i was in england uh, at the end of february in london and there when i i mean a friend of mine was always joking like he was trying to show me that it's gonna be serious but i i didn't take him seriously and then i saw that like there were no any more soaps or shampoos or whatever at the shops and at that point i was like okay this is turning to be something interesting i think it's gonna go somewhere and at that point, I also knew that a couple of expos and fairs had got cancelled, like mm-hmm. technology fairs and whatever. And mm-hmm. then I kind of got the hint it's going to be a whole new world, but I didn't really believe in it until it happened to me too. Like until I heard the festivals where I'm working, like that it's Big Jazz Can't Be uh, Island Festival in Turkey we're working at actually mm-hmm. can't happen. They just announced two days ago or something Mm -hmm. like when we started hearing those things it was like okay it's gonna be really a different uh, year and I personally can't foresee how it's gonna be I think it's I mean the music business in itself like the concerts and festivals are already having a hard time Um, it's not easy to do anything without sponsorships or like fundings or so and right now they can plan and I really can't tell if it's if it will be possible in some way to have a big concert or any concert at all this year or it's if, if it's going to be like next year and i'm kind of in between staying pessimistic and optimistic the whole time 
And I wanted to ask you how you feel. Do you have any idea how the future will look or are you more optimistic or pessimistic about this, these stuff? Maybe you go ahead. Yeah, um, I actually like stopped thinking about it because like with each day, like I'm really had enough of it, I think. But I believe like generally this will be over and, and um, it, it will be the new normal though. Like, I don't think it will be the way we were, we knew anymore. Mm -hmm. But with more regulations, I think it will be the new normal. But um, I believe it will be all okay in the end. And yeah, yeah, that's all. all like, <laughs> yeah, I think that too. But um, I'm still wondering when it is yeah. going to be. Yeah, when? When is it like? No one knows this answer. I think. And um, and yeah. As I already mentioned, um, as I'm, or as the three of us and, and many more people are um, directly affected um, by all those cancellations, mm -hmm. and um, and as I think that also these cancellations will be one of the last things that will be uh, taken back. Um, I'm not on the most optimistic side for now at least I, I i can't imagine that we will take this into 2021 mm -hmm. and um we still have to struggle with with that yeah do you foresee or do you think that like some companies or some festivals will have to declare bankruptcy or do you think it could go that bad i mean um like in Germany, they did already the, it's like called immediate help packages. Did, yeah. Could you, uh, advantage of that one, yeah? Could you get that? Was it, was, okay. Yeah. And yeah. I think Turkey did like basically nothing. They, nothing, yeah. Of tax reductions, but that really doesn't actually apply to the music business. So it's really weird there. Um, so, I mean, it's also interesting, like Germany has been the focus through this whole situation in the world because how I think it's one of the best countries, I mean, not just me personally, but it happens to be one of the best countries to deal how it's dealt with the situation. But I mean, for Turkey, I do see that for coming, but for Germany, I could also expect that because as we've kept saying, like festivals mainly happen in the summer and a lot of us do wait summer in order to earn some income and um oh, yeah. i'm kind of scared for the future that i mean yeah what what do you think you first uh yeah like you're you're on the lucky side again because like of this germany's package i on the other hand didn't get anything um and um i don't ha really have an assurance in turkey from the government uh, but like I've been lucky on the other side, like like for example, my landlady didn't get any rent for this month. For example, she was super nice. And um, but I was told that if I moved to Germany before all this happened, and I will also be able to get that package, <laughs> like the care of money. That Until May thirty first, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like if I don't know if I manage to come till then, till then maybe I'll still be able to get it. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but now, um, yeah, it's been, I think, two months since I didn't have any income, mm -hmm. some sort of, yeah. yeah. But I'm really, like, thankful for my landlady. <laughs> yeah, that's... She's that's awesome. Yeah, move. that's also, yeah. Good move. Cool. Um, well, yeah, for me, I'm on the lucky side. I got those, um, let's name it, 5,000 euros. And... Um, yeah. And I hope I don't have to pay back it because yeah. um, <laughs> because right now um, it's it's not completely clarified um, who is who is allowed to take that that money and who not um, because um, actually it is for um, to 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 um, have some kind of cash flow in order to um, to to pay your debts and mm -hmm. um, and not for your personal um, use. Mm -hmm. use yeah 
um, because for this um, you actually are supposed to go to um, to, to job center. It's it's called job center here in, in Germany, which is um, can you can you translate? I think right? I know what you. Yeah, for yeah. Me, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. And um, which is much more exhausting um, in in order to apply for it and and stuff. And and you always have to prove things. And well, this is loosened right now but um it will come back and and then you have to um then you have to prove things um for for uh the months before um but still uh, well for for me um the situation is like i i don't have um those job related debts but um because i'm doing uh all my all my works at home at the kitchen table or in in the living room or wherever it's free uh, for the moment and i i don't have any office or don't have to pay rent for um mm -hmm. for a studio or something like this yeah. so yeah let's wait for for it and and hope that that i can that I can get away with it. it. Yeah, can get away yeah. with it. <laughs> Whatever. And um, yeah, but on the other hand, those five thousand euros, uh, which sounds like pretty something, um, and which is pretty something, um, it it's it's gone after a few months, you know. And um, especially um, with, with my family, um, depending on everybody's uh, personal situation um it's sooner or later gone and um and then we need to think again what what to do and um well some people may be able then to um to get back to work and um for some other people either there there has to be additional help from from state from government or um they have to be have to improvise somehow mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah yeah definitely i mean i think also even if companies survive if festivals survive like since we also don't know when there will be concerts again or whatever i think everything will be in smaller capacity and i think a lot of people won't be able to find jobs who actually had them or mm -hmm. secured them but i mean it's a whole i don't know i i can't see <laughs> i can't really imagine how it's gonna be yeah but... maybe there's there's um th there will be new genres who um that that will um develop more than um if if there wasn't the virus like all the online side um all those all those streamed concerts and also we we already now see see um a transition from those videos where, where people uh were meeting on on skype or or zoom and um playing with each other for example a band who, who plays with you, with each other and um but all of this in a kind of poor but sexy uh, aesthetic and um and now it 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 changes over to more and more complex uh, productions and um and there are tv stations who um who jump on that train and um and start to to think about uh, what kind of um formats we um, they they could they could develop for it and, and stuff. So um, I'm I'm quite hopeful that there's gonna be more and more on this side, mm. um, at least for yeah, hopefully um, most people as possible um, to to get back to any kind of work mm. in in this mm -hmm. uh, in in this branch. And of course, not really for um, for a great concert um, uh, experience because I don't think that this really makes up um, what you what you experience on a, on a on a real concert. Not at all. No. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, on the, on that sense, it was kind of, I was really happy to do the online festival, like the shootings, because even though I know for a long time I won't be attending to any festival, I mean, not just working, but also attending to any kind of concert, like the shootings that gave me a bit of like being active, being there, hearing the live music and being able to clap at the end, that mm -hmm. kind of, that really made me happy. It was a really it was a really good time even though we were just like 10 people the team and then like the artists it was nice to be there even though we didn't hug each other even though we stood apart it was nice to be there to feel that to be a part of that uh, and i'm really happy that we did it actually mm -hmm. totally yeah but of course we have to be honest it was a different feeling being there to yeah. be there than um, watching it um, afterwards on, on our computers. It's, it's something different. It's, it's still good and um, also there we can be happy to, yeah, to have done it, but um, it's different. I mean, some concerts we didn't even hear because like the musicians were using in-ears and just like Vanya, oh, okay. our director heard everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, okay, <laughs> there's no sound <laughs> at one. Like at Comfort Rauschen, we just heard the drums and nothing else. And it was like- That's all, cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we would have to improve that um, if there's going to be a series or something like this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that it's so strange because we all three were supposed to work together. If nothing happened, I was also gonna be a part of the XS team okay. as well. Yeah, so this is really strange for me at the moment. <laughs> it, it is. Um, those were mainly my questions. I mean, if you guys want to add mm -hmm. anything, please do. If you want to say something to the world that needs to be said or so. But if not, no. I'm really happy that you had the time and you joined and you wanted to do this. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks.